All right, let's talk about projections. When we think about projections, there are four things to take into account. Class, aspect, case, which when combined with class tells us about lines and points of tangency. And finally, our distortion properties. Let's talk about each of them in a little bit more detail. Class, also called your developable surfaces, have three options, cone, plane, or cylinder. Imagine a piece of paper going around your globe and a light shining out from the middle of the globe. The results of these different classes are maps which have different shapes. The cone will look like this when you show it on a map. A planar projection is really good for local areas and looks like this. And a cylinder is often good for whole earth projections and will give you a rectangular shaped map. How the developable surface goes around the globe is called aspect. The surface can go around the equator, which is called normal aspect or equatorial aspect. It can follow the meridians, which means it is transverse or it can go in an, any other directions, which is when it's called oblique. This is how your developable surface wraps around the globe. Then we have case. Case is whether the developable surfaces, surface just touches the outside of the globe or whether it goes through the globe. You have two options here, tangent, just touches it, or secant, where it goes through it. Where the surface touches the globe, there's no distortion. In a tangent projection, there's one standard line. That's where you have no distortion. And in a secant projection, where the surface goes through the globe, there are two standard lines. As you move away from the standard line or lines, you get more distortion. Here's more on the different cases for each of the different developable surfaces. In a tangent case for a cone, it touches the globe like this. In a secant case, it looks like that. Again, here's a cylinder and a plane just touches the globe at one point or goes through the globe. On azimuthal or planar projections, there's actually a standard circle on secant projections and just a standard point on tangent projections. Here's another view of this for azimuthal. On the tangent, there's no scale distortion at just one point. On secant uh, planar projections, there's no distortion where that goes through, which would make a circle. Finally, we have the preservation properties. You will work with this on lab, so I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here, but suffice to say that you can pick a projection which either preserves area or angles. Equal area projections preserve area so that areas on the map are proportional to the projected version of the globe. For instance, Mercator, famous for making Greenland huge, is not an equal area projection. This one here is, right, and Greenland's quite small. Conformal projections, on the other hand, preserve angles, aka they preserve shape so that even while the sizes might not be equal, the shape looks right. This is the Mercator projection, and Mercator preserves angles. Greenland is that shape, but it certainly is not that big. Finally, we have compromise projections. This is a Robinson projection, which is an example of a compromise projection, and it was used for a long time by National Geographic to make maps that look nice. This doesn't preserve angles or area, but it looks decent. Finally, Tissot's and Dicatrix are distortion ellipses, which are used to help identify which aspects of a projection is preserved and how that distortion happens. You'll use these in lab. Now let's talk about north arrows. 
Contrary to popular belief, north arrows are not necessary or even correct on all maps. Here's a map with a north arrow. I'm here to tell you that that north arrow is incorrect. On a conic projection, only the central meridian on the projection uh, is north actually up. So if you're desperate to put a north arrow on your map, and this is your map, you need to put it here, which in my opinion looks pretty stupid. We can assume that most people assume north is up on maps, and honestly, my opinion, which may not be the most popular opinion, is that you really only need to put a north arrow on your map when north isn't up. See, what about here? How can you put a north arrow on this? Go back to your developable, developable surfaces and think. North arrows are really only good on cylindrical projections. Finally, I want to finish up this projections lecture with a quick note about Web Mercator. You see Web Mercator all of the time. Almost every map on the web uses Web Mercator. Apple Maps, Google Maps, ArcGIS Online, all of them use Web Mercator. This is very similar to the regular Mercator projection. And you might know a bit about the Mercator projection beyond what I just told you earlier in this lecture how it distorts places that are at high latitudes like Greenland. But while this projection is problematic in certain ways that it makes people think Greenland's huge or really gives prominence to places in the Northern hemisphere, it's also a decent projection for web maps. And here's why. It's accurate enough that it can support calculation. This is because it's a conformal projection. It's pretty good at routing vehicles. It allows for fast, uh, fast response on calculations, which is why it's really great for all of these web tools that use it. It's conformal, so it prefer, preserves local scale and things look like the right shape. And finally, it only has a little distortion in areas of high population. Places that are really distorted in this uh, map are places at the far reaches um, of far high latitudes. So places like Greenland, Northern Canada, Northern Russia, and Antarctica are pretty distorted, but places like the mid latitudes where a lot of us live are not very distorted. So let's recap. You need to know what case, developable surfaces, aspect, and case are. What combinations of case and class lead to different numbers of standard lines, circles, or points? North arrows aren't necessary on all maps. So what developable surface, surfaces do not work well with for north arrows? And Web Mercator has some advantages. Know them. <laughs>